What's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. Check this out. We've got some super parts from High Boxing to share with you guys here today. What this is is a 118 scale metal upgrade kit. Now it is compatible with any of the 118 scales in the High Boxing lineup. I'm going to be installing this into the 18859A which has plenty of upgrades direct from factory and I think with this kit we're going to be able to uh, somewhat bulletproof it. So let's get everything out of this packaging here and let me show you what's all included. So instructions 118 scale vehicles hop ups showing all the parts and installation instructions on both sides we'll keep that close i might need it got some thread lock included we got here we got some hubs so it looks like we got front and rear hubs does not come with uh new bearings so you're just going to transfer the bearings over from your existing model we've got some steering components here looks like we got some steering arms and an ackerman plate some adjustable links servo hold down plate is what that is and we got a servo arm right there so we're going to get all this installed into the 18859a here and what i like is the blue matches what's already existing here we got the blue caps on the shocks the blue motor i started with the rear hub we've got the one side already installed as you can see right there i'm going to show you how to do this other side remove the wheel obviously and first thing i uh i did was remove this bottom pin now it just presses out presses from the inside out but it's not easy at least mine weren't the one side wasn't easy to push out and i really struggled to actually even try to push it out there so i ended up using a, a gear puller that i have these are for pinion gears on motors and it actually worked out pretty good so i'm just going to slide that over i'm not sure how well you guys are going to be able to see this but you'll at least see how easy this is to remove i'll try to somewhat keep it in line for you guys if i can Let me get that out of the way but there we go you can see right there i'm lined up with it and it's going to turn it and you'll see that pin start to come out just like that now we've got enough to grab onto with a pair of pliers there get this stand back up pair of pliers and we should be able to pull that out the rest of the way no problem so that was the hardest part at least on the other side until i got that gear puller out and we'll just slide that out now dog bone's going to fall out remove your uh, hex pin Slide that out the back. You're going to want to save those bearings as well. So we're just going to pop those out. There we go. And the last thing to do is there's a screw right here. Just need to unscrew that. And there we go disassembled the only other thing you're going to want to take out is this little insert in here because they do supply you with some metal ones you typically can do that with a screwdriver just by pushing they actually pop out somewhat easily let me try here there we go we popped it right out it went flying somewhere i'll find that later some new ones of those little inserts metal ones that will just we'll pop that one in right away the easiest way i find to pop these in is just with a pair of pliers there we go that's popped in ready to go we can stick our uh, bearings in now and they fit in nice there we go we'll get that back in and our hex pin well it's somewhere there it is sliding that hex pin in there and there it's assembled now now what i'm going to do is i'm going to start with that bottom pin again and we're going to slide it back in and get it lined up again this might be difficult to get it through there once you get it lined up though you should be able to get it in somewhat uh 
easily. There we go. So it's somewhat in there. And then I just grab a bigger piece, pair of pliers here and grab the end of it. And there we go, push it in the rest of the way. Okay, that's in now. Next step, I'm just gonna clean this dog bone off a bit while I have it out. Put it into place, line it up there. Your upper arm lined up. And the next thing is you have a machine screw here and this is where you can use the thread locker. A little thread locker on there don't need much and this is very at least it looks very sticky everything lined up there there we go and that's it guys that's how easy the rear hubs are able to be changed. I'm getting ready to get all the front components in right now. And I just wanted to show you some of the disassembly that needs to happen here. I removed the shocks. And as well as you're going to want to remove this front uh, end here, which I've already taken out the screws. Four screws in the bottom right there. We've also got two screws there. And I've also removed four screws on the chassis. Those four screws are out. And what that's going to do is going to allow me to do some further uh, disassembly and get access to all of this a little easier. So next, what I'll be doing is we'll be removing the top arms here. This is these two screws here. Get those out of the way. And what that now allows us to do is get the remaining screws on the diff cover and remove the whole diff cover, including the shock tower here, right off of the RC which will open up and give us access to everything we need to replace so We've here. got everything just hanging here right now. I've got the additional few screws I showed you I was going to take off. Those are out now. Uh, before we remove the diff cover here, I am going to unplug the LED lights because they're going to come out with it. And this should just lift off now. And you might, the only difficult part, well, not even maybe that difficult, you just might want to, there we go, just get the center brace here from underneath the other half. And then, should be oh there we go just pull it right off like that all right so that's off and you can see now guys we have access to all our steering components we have access to our front hubs and they're just hanging right there so what i'm going to do now is i'm going to get the front hubs off of the links here because the links are being changed as well we'll change out the hubs well, i'll change out one and then i'll come back and i'll show you how to change out that other one and then we'll get into the steering components here and the servo and get those all changed out and that'll be guys, it. I've got the steering hub on the one side pre-assembled here, ready to go back in. We're gonna do the other side right now. It's actually not too difficult at all. We've got a screw up top here on the hub and a screw below. So we'll need to remove those. And they come out pretty easy. top one out you can see that'll just pull off like so that and we've also got a screw on top of the the link here on the linkage unscrew that and there we go the old hub is out now we just got to get the axle out of there which this uh Pin seems to be a little stuck. Let's see if we can help it out here. There we go. That out. We're going to pull the bearings out. Okay, and there we go. We've got the old hub All right, out. So we're gonna put this back together here now with the new hub. Slide that lower control arm in. And we're gonna take one of the included uh, machine screws that were in that uh, package. Put a little thread lock on there. 
And we'll line that up, we'll slide it in. Screw that in. Now we got the top arm here. And I'm just using the one I've already built back here as a reference. Another little machine screw. Slide that in. There, that's all done. We can stick the bearings in now. Ooh, that one slid right out off the bench. I'll have to get that. Anyways, we got the bearing in the back. We'll slip our bearing in the front once I go retrieve it. We're gonna stick our axle through there and we'll be good to go. Moving along here now that we've got the front hubs pre-assembled, ready to go back in, we're gonna start getting these steering components out. So. I'm trying to take out the least amount as possible to get the job done, just to make it quicker and a little bit easier. So I'm not going to remove the diff or the center shaft here. We're going to remove a screw right here on one of the arms that connected to the Ackerman plate. And that's going to separate it and allow me just to pull the one side right up. And we can actually pull the pins right out too if we wanted to. They just pop out and you're going to be using those again and now we should be able to after we remove the screw on top of the linkage here we should be separated and able to pull that right out so that's how it was when it was in there we just separated the one side remove the top link from the servo and that is out ready to uh, put the new one in so we can have a look at the new one here Shouldn't be too difficult. I'm going to pre-assemble it and we'll get it back in. I'm just going to basically copy what the existing plastic one was like there. So I'll get that all assembled. We'll slide it in the same way we took it out and then do up that last uh, screw and we should be good. Alright, so Ackerman plate steering arms are in. That was pretty easy. Now we're going to remove the servo. We've got three screws on the top here. Get a little closer for you to see. So these three screws are going to come out and we'll be able to lift that servo out and then replace the servo arm, replace the linkage, and replace the, the mounting plate or the hold down plate. So that's what we're going to do next. When it comes time to put the linkage onto the servo arm, you're going to want to make sure you pick the right one because there's two of them that are the same length. One that's slightly smaller and that's going to be the one for your uh, servo arm. So just keep that in mind. I just tighten them all the way down and the one is just a little bit smaller than the rest. So we got to get that thread lock here again. Everything, basically everything that's got a machine screw gets a little, little bit of this uh, thread lock on the end of it and all I'm doing here guys is just basically looking at the existing parts I took off I have been referring back to the manual a bit to uh, just make sure I'm doing things right but there we go we're basically just going with what the old one looked like and we'll slip that onto the servo now and we also got to uh Make sure that we're kind of going the right way, which the arm was facing up when I put it on. So that's what we'll do again. And if we need to adjust that steering, we'll do it after we have everything back together. We can pop that servo out somewhat easily and adjust the steering on it. But I don't think we're going to need to. And there we go. That part is done. We're going to get that servo back in place and then we're going to hook up the linkage here 
and then start reassembling these front uh, arms here with the hubs that we pre-assembled and that'll be about it guys Okay, we're nearly there guys. Final components to go on are the two steering linkages on either side. And that's it, a little thread lock. We're gonna screw it in there, screw it into the steering arm. And that is it. So I'm gonna get right to it here. I'm getting low on the thread lock. There we go. All right. So I'll start by uh, getting back in there on the steering arm line it up and we'll uh, adjust them up after we get them in line it up to the hub there Just repeat that on the other side now we've got all the parts installed I'm gonna get the wheels back on and we're gonna to have to adjust this front end to straighten it out I can tell right now it's looking a little wonky right now it's definitely not uh, lined up so I'm gonna get these wheels back on we'll get it all back together and then we'll uh, we'll make some adjustments here and hopefully we'll uh, we'll be good to go so now we've got the wheels back on you can see how out the steering is gonna be let's power it up here So we're pretty dead straight on the right side here, but on that left side, we're way out. And I think our first adjustment should be the servo arm. We should lengthen it a bit here, the linkage at the servo. So there's really no access to the adjustment there. So I'm going to power it off. And we're going to, there we go. We can get, see that hole there now, the adjustment hole. And I'm just going to lengthen it here. These uh, are super easy to adjust. They're not tight at all, which is great for adjusting. I'm just using an awl here to get in the hole there. And we'll spin it out a little bit. And then we'll power it back up and see where we're at. Maybe one more turn. All right, let's see how that is now. Let's see if that's... All right, that's a bit better. So actually it's a little bit too much. I'm gonna bring it back a bit. So we'll power it back on. This is a little trial and error. So what I'm wanting to do here is 
have the wheels so they're out about the same distance so we don't have to adjust uh, just one side to straighten them up. Let's try that now. Okay, so now we're looking pretty even here on both sides. So I've got a little bit of an adjustment to adjust them out, but that's not a big deal. And what I notice is these are pretty easy to adjust by hand. So we'll adjust both sides. I'll just dial it in here. And this is running so smooth. Actually, that's looking almost... We've almost got it there. I think in a little bit less here. Yeah, I think we've got to bring it in a bit more, a little too much. That's about where I want it, guys. All right, guys, well, that's about it for this one. Thanks again to High Boxing for sending this kit out for me to share with you guys. Not a bad little metal upgrade kit here. Easy to install. It's functioning great. No binding at all. The adjustments were easy to get that steering all straightened out. I'm impressed. That was painless. Glad I could share that with you guys. If you like this video, make sure you have a big thumbs up. New to the channel, don't forget to hit that subscribe button before you head out. And remember, don't be a stranger. We'll see you on the next one. See ya.